like you're getting your legs under you? Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm just going out there and doing what I'm supposed to do. You know, uh, when my number's called, just get the job done so there's no drop off when like the second string or the third string comes in there to, you know, take over the game. And I'm just happy that I got an opportunity to showcase my talents. Um, I honestly didn't find out till this game, but you know it's better to have an opportunity. It's better to be ready and not have an opportunity than uh, not be ready and have an opportunity. So I just try to remain focused and stay ready at practice and meetings and all that, and uh, keep faith. It's been like for you adjusting to the culture down here. I imagine it's pretty different from Michigan, and certainly Nigeria. Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot different. Being so far from home, I didn't think it would ever get this cold. You know, I like the cold, so I'm kind of happy about that. It was kind of cold last game, so that's probably why I play good. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not that much different. It feels like a family, you know. Every time I come down here, I feel like I'm at home with my brothers, and, you know, it's, it's not that much different. When the season started, you know, everybody was talking about the, the, the loss of the three main guys off the defensive front from last year's team to the NFL. What was it like to come in and try to fill that void as a freshman and, and look towards playing time? Um, it wasn't it wasn't that that big of a task. I mean, those guys are great guys, but Clemson recruits great players. You know, uh, Tyler Davis, Niles Pinkney, and Jordan Williams. The list goes on. So, you know, we all just try to remain ready and not fall into the hype and uh, do what we needed to do and uh, show that, like, even though those guys left, that there's still a whole bunch of guys that's willing to play and willing to sacrifice for the team. What's it like working with Coach Bates? Uh, he's a great coach. I mean not playing football for that long. I only started playing 11th grade and coming here and switching positions to defensive tackle. It hasn't been that much of a drop off. You know, it's still the same to me. Uh, he's coaching me very well, taking his time with me. So the game is slowing down to me. And it's not like I'm running out there with my head cut off and just running around there with the bright light. So. Uh, that's kind of hard. I've grown in every aspect, honestly. My game has gotten better. Uh, I feel that I've grown mostly with the run game. Since, you know, uh, in high school, I didn't play the run that well. But now I feel like I can stop the run. And what specifically allowed you to improve in the run game? Uh, probably like, you know, taking on double teams. I'm not used to that since I used to play outside. I used to just beat one guy one-on-one. -on -one, but now it's two guys. It's just a grown man's world down there. So I, I, just, I just thank him for giving me the ability to hold my own. What's the pressure like uh, with the reputation this defense has built over the past several years. What is the pressure like to perform at a high level once you get in there and get some snaps? I mean, it's no pressure at all. It's just uh, Coach Venables, he's probably the greatest defensive coordinator to ever do do this. And if you just follow his system and listen to him, like the plays will come to you. You don't even have to make spectacular plays. But if you just know what to do and do your assignment, the plays will eventually come to you. So it's really no pressure. Just go out there and do your job, and it all falls to place. No, I played all outside, yeah. Okay, so your first time to spectacular? It was, yeah, in camp, yeah. Okay. What was that like? You first it was uh, completely different. Everything moves fast in there, so I didn't have time to, like, read my blocks, so I struggled with reading blocks and all that. But now it's kind of slowed down to me, and now I can uh, see see what's coming. And uh, I can – Coach Bates has taught me to look at the backfield since pre-snap and look at the mannerisms of the offensive line. So it's it's getting pretty easy. Uh, nah. No, okay. So where are you weighing right now? Uh, 293. How, how did your recruitment kind of unfold? Just how did that process go with Coach Mooney? Did, did they re reach out to you or did you reach out to them? How did that go? Uh, it's kind of a funny story. Uh, I was just on my phone one day and Coach Venables followed me on Twitter. And, like, I kept trying to follow him, but I guess his Twitter was private, so he didn't know how to accept it. So we couldn't communicate. <laughs> and uh, so... So I, he kind of reached out to me and DM gave him my number and then we talked and they offered me over the phone and uh, to show how serious I was, I came down here in probably like two weeks and uh, ever since then it's just been the sky's the limit. What's it like to all of a sudden notice that Venables is following you on Twitter? That just kind of happened out of the. Yeah, it just kind of happened out of the blue. I didn't even know like I was I was uh, getting closer to closing my recruitment during the summer. I wanted to commit early so I could focus on my senior season. And then when he followed me, that just like opened up a lot of doors. And 
Clemson has been a dream school of mine for a while, you know, playing with them on uh, NCAA uh, with my brothers, so. Is there a particular player or two that's kind of taken you under his wing, one of the older guys? Um, I'd say uh, Justin Maskell. I mean, that's kind of probably not what people would expect, but, you know, I just, every, every day I came here, he'd always have his head down to work, you know. No matter what it was, it was work. It camp, work, all those hard days, he'd always pick me up and have my back. And Niles and Jordan, and they always had my back ever since. So, you know, it got hard, but they always, they always stuck with me. How did Clemson become your dream school? Um, it was really through NCAA, the NCAA football game, because that was the only team that could beat Alabama. And that was the only team that, so every time my brother would pick Alabama, I would pick Clemson. And, uh, I really hope they do, so I can, you know, play with myself. <laughs> what I, I would like to talk about just how long you are, how many scrimmages you have. What do you think are your best attributes in that regard? Hmm. Uh, God has blessed me with size, so like I adapt pretty well. Uh, I went from playing end, I was probably like 215 pounds, to being like 290 in a year and a half. So it has. I haven't. I haven't got any slower to me. I, I've gotten faster actually. Uh, the strength coaches have done a great job with me. Uh, and, yeah, I just honestly thank God for all my attributes. I mean, he's the one that's blessed me with the capability mentally and phys physically. started playing late, so what kind of got you into football? What were you doing before? Uh, it was uh, my 10th grade year after basketball season. We lost in the state championship. And I was kind of like, I was going into my junior year, like, I'm trying not to, I have six siblings. And my parents are paying for their school, so I didn't. I was trying to figure out ways for them not to pay for my school. So my coach just called me after the game, a football coach, Corey Parker, and uh, told me to come try out and play football for him. I didn't know what I was doing. I just went out there and played a lot of positions. Actually, they switched me from like wide receiver to tight end to linebacker, and then I was just getting heavier and bigger and bigger, lifting weights, and I eventually somehow ended up on the D line, and it just it just went up from there. Uh, I wouldn't say so much. I mean, I knew after after my first summer playing football, I knew that was my calling. You know, God has God has mysterious ways of revealing Himself to people, and you know, uh, I started developing love for the game and working harder and harder, and then to be here is just a blessing. Where did you rank among your siblings? I'm the youngest one. You're the youngest. Yeah. Okay. They played sports. Uh, one of my sisters ran track in high school, but she's in the military now, so. Did you, were you like a football fan, even though you weren't playing? Football? Yeah, I was a football fan. All my cousins played football. I got a cousin in Notre Dame. Uh, I got another cousin, he went to Michigan. He played defensive end, and one more cousin, he plays at Iowa right now, so. I mean, we've, we've always had a football family, and I've always supported them and wanted to do it, but my love was for basketball at the time, so. Uh, not really, probably in the backyard, <laughs> but nothing major. So did you think basketball would be, like if you played in college growing up, you thought that's the sport you would do? Yeah, I thought I was going to play basketball for the rest of my life because uh, in eighth grade, I was always the tallest kid. And then when 10th grade came, it's point guards that are my size. So now it's like I can't go to like the NBA being a 6'5 power forward the center. So I had to come to the realization that I had to figure out something else to do. Um, I don't even know, to be honest. I I just hope that it, you know, everything works out for the best. And so I don't even know where I'd be right now if I didn't play football. Are you getting any basketball looks from any schools? Or? Uh, not major schools, but, you know, small schools around the area. Uh, you know, I was on a circuit, played for Michigan Mustangs. And when was your first offer again? Toledo, University of Toledo. When, when did that come? It came my third game of my junior year. Went to go visit them and they they offered me. What's the worst pronunciation of your name? Oh wow, <laughs> I miss a lot of them. I mean, I couldn't even tell you right now, but just a oh, easy way to remember it. Like I told them, it's like oh row row your boat. So just remember that the H's are silent and uh, yeah. But it's been a lot of pronunciations. Yes, yeah, it's, it's Ogene Rukwe. It means uh, God has done so much for me. Uh, as you know, I'm from Nigeria, so 
you know, names names have meanings to them, and they're pretty long, but. Um, Niles did one time, and completely obliterated it. But <laughs> I wouldn't hold it to him. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. No problem.